But I incite the reader to a charitable opinion hereof, with a Christian protestation of an innocent purpose therein, and entreat the reader to follow this advice of Tabius. And if there be any scandal in this enterprise of mine, it is taken, not given, and this comfort I have in that axiom of Trismegistus, and therefore I present it without disguise, and object it to all of candor and indifference, and of readers, of whom there be four sorts, as one observes, sponges, which attract all without distinguishing, hourglasses, which receive and pour out as fast, bags, which retain only the dregs of spices and let the wine escape, and sieves, which retain the best only. Some there are of the last sort, and to them I present this occult philosophy, knowing that they may reap good thereby. And they who are severe against it, they all pardon this my opinion, that such their severity proceeds from self-guiltiness, and give me leave to apply that of an odious, that it is the nature of self-wickedness to think that of others, which themselves deserve. And it is all the comfort which guilty have, not to find any innocent. But that amongst others this may find some acceptance is the desire of our Turner. Arbital of Magic, containing nine tomes and seven septenaries of aphorisms. The first is called Isagog, or a book of the institutions of magic, or which in forty and nine aphorisms comprehendeth the most general precepts of the whole art. The second is Microcosmical Magic, what microcosmos hath affected magically by his spirit and genius addicted to him from his nativity, that is, spiritual wisdom, and how the same is affected. The third is Olympic magic, in what manner a man may do and suffer by the spirits of Olympus. The fourth is Hesodiacal and Homerical magic, which teacheth the operations by the spirits called cacodemons, as it were not adversaries to mankind. The fifth is Romaine, or Sibylline magic, which acteth and operates with tutelar spirits and lords, to whom the whole orb of the earth is distributed. To this also is the doctrine of the Druids referred. The sixth is Pythagoral magic, which only acteth with spirits to whom is given the doctrine of arts, as physic, medicine, mathematics, alchemy, and such kind of art. The seventh is the magic of Apollonius, and the like and agreeeth with the Romaine and microcosmical magic. Only it hath this peculiar, that it hath power over the hostile spirits of mankind. The eighth is hermetical, that is, Egyptical magic, and differeth not much from divine magic. The ninth is that wisdom which dependeth solely upon the word of God, and this is called prophetical magic. The first tome of the book of Arbital of Magic is called Isagog. In the name of the Creator of all things both visible and invisible, who revealeth his mysteries out of his treasures to them that call upon him, and fatherly and mercifully bestoweth those his secrets upon us without measure, may he grant unto us, through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, his ministering spirits, the revealers of his secrets, that we may write this book of Arbital concerning the greatest secrets which are lawful for man to know, and to use them without offense unto God. Amen. The first septenary of aphorisms. The first aphorism. Whosoever would know secrets, let him know how to keep secret things secretly, and to reveal those things that are to be revealed, and to seal those things which are to be sealed, and not to give holy things to dogs, nor cast pearls before swine. Observe this law, and the eyes of thy understanding shall be opened, to understand secret things, and thou shalt have whatsoever thy mind desireth to be divinely revealed unto thee. Thou shalt have also the angels and spirits of God prompt and ready in their nature to minister unto thee, as much as any humane mind can desire. Aphorism 2 in all things call upon the name of the Lord, and without prayer unto God through his only begotten Son, do not thou undertake to do or think anything. And use the spirits given and attributed unto thee as ministers, without rashness and presumption, as the messengers of God, having a due reverence towards the Lord of spirits. And the remainder of thy life do thou accomplish, demeaning thyself peaceably, 
to the honor of God and the profit of thyself and thy neighbor. Aphorism 3. Live to thyself and the muses. Avoid the friendship of the multitude. Be thou covetous of time, beneficial to all men. Use thy gifts, be vigilant in thy calling, and let the word of God never depart from thy mouth. Aphorism 4. Be obedient to good admonitions. Avoid all procrastination. Accustom thyself to continency and gravity, both in thy words and deeds. Resist temptations of the tempter by the word of God. Flee from earthly things, seek after heavenly things. Put no confidence in thy own wisdom, but look unto God in all things. According to that sentence of the scripture, when we know not what we shall do unto thee, O God, do we lift up our eyes, and from thee we expect our help. From where all humane refuges do forsake us, there will the help of God shine forth, according to the saying of Philo. Aphorism 5. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And the Lord will keep thee as the apple of his eye, and will replenish thee with all good, and nothing shall thy soul desire, but thou shalt be fully endued therewith, so that it be contingent to the salvation of thy soul and body. Aphorism 6. Whatsoever thou hast learned, frequently repeat, and fix the same in thy mind, and learn much, but not many things, because a humane understanding cannot be alike capable in all things, unless it be such a one that is divinely regenerated. Unto him nothing is so difficult or manifold, which he may not be able equally to attain to. Aphorism 7. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will hear thee, and thou shalt glorify me, saith the Lord. For all ignorance is tribulation of the mind. Therefore call upon the Lord in thy ignorance, and he will hear thee. And remember that thou give honor unto God, and say with the psalmist, Not unto us, Lord, but unto thy name give the glory. The second septenary. Aphorism 8. Even as the scripture testifies that God appointeth names to things or persons, and also with them hath distributed certain powers and offices out of his treasures, so the characters and names of stars have not any power by reason of their figure or pronunciation, but by reason of the virtue or office which God hath ordained by nature, either to such a name or character. For there is no power either in heaven or in earth or hell which doth not descend from God, and without his permission they can neither give or draw forth into any action anything they have. Aphorism 9. That is the chiefest wisdom which is from God, and next that which is in spiritual creatures afterwards, in corporal creatures fourthly in nature and natural things. The spirits that are apostate and reserved to the last judgment do follow these after a long interval. Sixthly, the ministers of punishment in hell and the obedient unto God. Seventhly, the pygmies do not possess the lowest place, and they who inhibit in elements and elementary things. It is convenient, therefore, to know and discern all differences of the wisdom of the Creator and the creatures, that it may be certainly manifest unto us what we ought to assume to our use of every thing, and that we may know in truth how and in what manner that may be done. For truly every creature is ordained for some profitable end to humane nature, and for the service thereof, as the Holy Scriptures reason and experience do testify.